comes after the word worse. Another loss on Sunday meant another frustrated Kyrie in his post-game interview. Boston has lost seven of their last eight games with Kyrie in their lineup. And a new report says that Kyrie has become disengaged and detached. Here's what Kyrie had to say about the recent media criticism towards him. It's a constant battle, you know, um, because media has just gotten just outrageous. You know what I mean? Like, I just saw some the other day where, you know, even, you know, um, you know, I, I mean, it's just, he's the greatest player playing our game right now, but even seeing somebody question, like, Bron's body of work, like, my body of work, KD's body of work, and, you know, the team's success falls on the best player. And whether call it fair or unfair, but nobody should ever question what type of winner those guys are. You know what I mean? What type of winner I am or whether or not I have the team in first mentality. You know, it's like nobody wants it to be solely about them, but we take most of the responsibility and so does the head coach. So when you have that and you have a relationship that you have to build with that, and I've been doing it, being traded last year and just coming into this, it's, it's a lot of news for our team. And, um, you know, we're still building for something. So it gets to that point. Point, you know, it's just like, you know, it just gets to that point. And I'm normal. It makes players very unhappy. Very unhappy, I tell you that. Uh, I think someone told me that Adam Silver was talking the other day about how unhappy NBA players are, I, you know, especially nowadays because of just the scrutiny, exploitation that we go through of, uh, you know, everything being judged or, you know, someone being, you know, a very high stature and people are just still throwing stones at him, just trying to break him and break him and break him and break him. And words are very powerful. And, you know, I don't want to disconnect from any other person that would take anything personal, you know, because I'm still that person as well. See, we've talked on this show a lot about what Kyrie must be going through or how much of it should be placed on Kyrie Irving as the supposed leader and star of the team. What do you make of what's going on with Kyrie Irving? Well, Kyrie Irving got what he asked. He said he won his own team. All right, he, he said, oh, man, you know, I got trade. Uh, well, you demand to be trade. Like, uh, uh, this is all part of doing business. Now, I just don't know where you can make, contract-wise, 20 to $30 million dollars shoe deal 10 to 20 million dollars and not be criticized there are no jobs out there that you can make that kind of money and not be criticized now are the guys in the league are athletes now are they ready for the type of era that we're in obviously not but why would he be caring what people are saying about kd why would he be caring about what people are saying about lebron like me and what's going on in my personal life in the Celtics, that should be the only thing Kyrie should be thinking about. So all these guys, they swear up and down, man, you know, I ain't listening to that stuff. But it's obviously they listening, they watching, and it's affecting them in, in a negative way. Now, I heard what Adam Silver said. And just being from a clinical background standpoint, yes, we do have more young people taking medication, anxiety, other things, more than any other era, or any other uh, span that we've ever been in. That's true. So we shouldn't think that our star players wouldn't struggle with some type of anxiety because they're not built for the criticism. This is the AAU generation where everyone has patted them on the back all along the way, everything. So now people making viable critiques of their basketball, oh, they're now they're getting all ruffled and everything. This is part of the NBA, bro. Athletes been getting criticized all along the way. Now athletes more now because there's more people covering the game. But also, look at the kind of money you're making. Athletes have never been able to make the kind of money they're making, so now they want to make all the money, but they don't want any criticism or scrutiny. It's not going to happen, all right? You have a tremendous skill that creates a tremendous amount of attention to the NBA, and you should be thankful for that. You should be thankful that there are people covering, because you know the other sports? Hockey, they don't get criticized that much. They don't get paid as much either, Correct. all right? So nobody, it, nobody makes the money the NBA superstar does. Nobody, I, I know there's, I understand what Bryce Harper just signed for. There's a couple guys in baseball, but, a and, and, there's a, and there's a couple quarterbacks, but nobody makes the money the NBA superstar makes. And they're the most visible, if for no other reason than the fewest people on the court, fans sit closer to the court. No they're, helmets, it, Absolutely. All of it. Kyrie, Kyrie's in, it, it's an odd way to put it because he's 26 years old. But it feels to me like he's going through some, a bit of a mid-career, not mid-life, but a mid-career crisis. Like, because he doesn't know what he wants. Because a couple of years ago, he courted all the attention in the world by going on a nine-month tour talking about the earth being flat. He followed that up with this summer, 
he starred in a major motion picture based on a character he played in a sneaker commercial. Uncle Drew's a movie. You don't do that if you're trying to be the guy who now says, man, I just wish key. we could, play, you know, just fall. He wanted the spotlight, and he said at one point in that interview, yeah, I wanted the fame when I was younger. Okay, but we're not talking about when you were 17. We're talking about nine months ago. And so I, I, I understand the, the toxicity of social media. And I understand that Adam Silver talked about it. Athletes have always been criticized by media, but now no. every fan can get to them. And it's hard to turn this off. I'm older than Kyrie, but I'm not that much older than Kyrie. We both came up with this. It is very hard. I asked you this morning about something unrelated, about checking your mentions. And what I say? You don't do it. And you, but, but you're a... Uh, you're a different generation than me and a different generation than Kyrie. It has nothing to do with the generation because there's some other things that your generation is doing that I am doing. I know it's not going to be any good. It's not no separation from an age standpoint. I know it's not good for me. I think it's, I, the point I'm making is I think it is very difficult for people who came up in this era of social media, whatever it is, to disconnect from it. I think we saw it with Kevin Durant. We're seeing it with Kyrie. We've seen it not arguing with people in the mentions, but from LeBron. LeBron says, hey, we need the guys to shut off social media. Meanwhile, he's posting every day. But Kyrie doesn't know what will make him feel fulfilled. He did, said recently, basketball will never fulfill me. Did we not see that kid in the fifth grade? Ever since I was in the fifth grade, I was playing basketball. My brother was the best player in the state of Ohio. I've always had optics on me no matter what. When I was in the ninth grade, my brother was drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers. Everyone in my town said, don't worry, his brother is better than him. So from the ninth grade on, not only from a local spotlight, I was under the national spotlight. So I got criticized for everything that I did. So yeah, there might have been some years that I might be separated from you, but I've been criticized since I was a kid. I've been under the microscope since I was a kid. So thinking the reason why I don't check my mentions, not because I'm 53, it's because I'm smart. It's because I know it's not going to help me. I know people's words. If you take them inside of you, they can't hurt you. That's why I watch what I say. That's why I don't say players are losers. I say there's no test that you can have. What I can say is guys are committed at all costs to winning. All right. That's a different thing. So thinking that just because people weren't born in a certain era and having common sense, I know it's not good for me. I tell Jen all the time, don't read that mess. Don't look into that mess. See, that is so you are one of the very few people that can do that. And Life is, is about disciplines. Life right. is about decisions. All right. So every decision that you decide to make, you have to realize that there is a repercussion from that. If you fall in love with that, when people say, oh, man, you look nice, man, get out of my face. I, mar I march to the beat of my own drum. I'm not going to listen to other people. Because you know what? People don't know what I need. People don't know where I'm going. So why would I be going to them for advice? So being lost, this generation is lost. And looking for the applaud of other people, trying to get clicks, Correct. trying to be a five-star compared to working on being a star. Working on being a good teammate, working on the skills that got you to that level. That's what we should be talking about because all this attention, that's what's generating you that money. That's what generated that character, Uncle Drew. So it was okay when people clapped for well, it. And, and the other part of it that you said at the beginning, which is totally true. You know a guy who doesn't get scrutinized a lot? Clay Thompson. He makes, by the way, he doesn't have the same shoe deal Kyrie has, but he's on a max contract. He is, he is cool, chilling the way he is. Klay Thompson, we've never heard one time him say, you know what I want? I want to go have my own team and strike out on and my own. And just like Clay, who grew up with his dad, Michael Thompson, a Big Ten star at university mm -hmm. at the, for the Gophers, NBA star, he's been under the spotlight. Mm -hmm. All right, so he has known how to carry himself. Kyrie has always been on this track to be a star. And then once you get to the mountaintop, you know when, when people hike up Mount Everest, you know where most of the injuries happen? On the way down, after you relax, oh, I'm here now. They happen on the way down. They don't happen on your way ascending to try to get there. Kyrie was okay when he was hitting that buzzer beater. I mean, hitting the big shot mm -hmm. to beat Golden State. But now, how am I going to proceed as a superstar in this league? What's right. going to be my legacy? Oh, I care more about what people are saying. Like, you can't criticize Kyrie Irving's basketball game. You have to go off the court. You have to do other things because he is a dynamic. He's the best dribbler of the basketball ever. We 
He's one of the best finishers at the rim that we've ever right. seen. And then, of course, all of this magnified with the way the Celtics are playing. And if they weren't playing as poorly as they are playing right now, I don't think the well, spotlight would be of, as bright on of him. Of course, right and some of it is he's shooting himself in, his own, in the foot. Yeah. Some of it is he didn't have to, before the season, say, I'm going to be here forever. And then a week ago say, man, ask me July 1st. I don't know anyone bleep. Like, he, for a guy who doesn't want people talking about him, he gives us a lot of reason to talk about. And LeBron has grown. KD has grown. Let him.